Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? A lovely day. Low white cloud. I'm on my way to work as usual. It's Thursday. Thursday, uh, normally take the Thursday off for babysitting, but uh, circumstances have changed this week. We've got hearing tests and this is the kids and uh, going to play group for half the day. Sorry about all the background noise. It rattles a lot this car because it was converted for a wheelchair so it's got all extra seat belts and stuff in it and uh, straps and that for strapping the wheelchair down they just all rattle around in the back. Plus the roads I drive on are not all that flat. How are you anyway? How are you? All right? Hope we find you well, happy. We're just about to come into our busiest month. June is our busiest month. Don't ask me why, I can't explain it. We've got uh, and everything. What's on the agenda for today? Well, Normally, there's one really big pain in the arse thing every day, isn't there? That's time sensitive and that cannot be put off. So, today being the last day of the month, there are, the chances are there's more than one big pain in the arse thing. The first one is uh, my electricity tariffs run out at home and I, uh, I've got a spreadsheet where I put in my consumption and then just work out which tariff is likely to be the most cost effective and if you if you don't do anything you just get put on their standard variable rate which is which is the best for them and the worst for you which I'm sure is not right I'm sure the government is mandated that they're supposed to put you on the tariff that they've calculated is the best for you not the worst for you but of course they don't you know, it doesn't work. This someone I heard something the other day which I thought was really funny, which is that with the government, the government taking money off you to provide services for you is like having a, a blood transfusion where they take the blood out of your right arm and stick it in your left arm and spill half of it in the process. And I think that's absolutely great. That's um, Peter Schiff. He's an American uh, financial and economic commentator. He's a very, very amusing guy. You need to listen to him. He's, he's totally wrong on crypto, but he's, he's pretty well spot on on the American economy. And unlike Ron Paul, who's also spot on on the economy, Schiff sticks to the economy. Ron Paul tends to stray too much into foreign affairs. You know, foreign policy, Libya, uh, Yemen, all that sort of stuff, which is, I mean, I'm not saying that's not important, but basically his message on foreign, American foreign wars, or wars on foreign soil, is that you should, uh, they should just withdraw, you know, and let everyone sort it out, because they're all grown-ups, and they can kill each other, and then they'll find their own stability in the area, you know. So... I don't know if uh, if some sort of spaceship from the future had arrived in Europe in the Middle Ages when we were, we were all at war in Italy when they were all fighting each other and sort of tried to <clears throat> and said, "Look, you guys, you know, you're you're stuck in the Middle Ages here. Your life is not about war. You know, you need to settle down a bit. Just calm down. You know, drink less coffee." I don't know whether that would they have stopped. Would they have stopped or did? Does every region have to go through its own uh, period of, uh, you know, its own dark ages? Uh, can you stop? Can you stop the Middle East going through the dark ages? You know, because that's what that that period in Europe when uh, science held no sway and religion was in control of everything was literally called the Dark Ages. <laughs> so, why, 
we're trying to sort out their dark ages. I don't think we will. Anyway, I mean, he's he's very clued up on uh, you know the difference between ISIS and the, the Taliban, but uh, and the uh, whatever the Mujahideen and all that. But basically, his message is that's just America's got no business being there, no threat to America. We should just pull out because the country's broke, <laughs> and that's you know correct. But it's the same message. So, but Schiff actually always sticks to uh, economic American economic theory which I find highly fascinating because it's, it's just a bigger uh, and, 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 and slightly worse version of UK economic policy. So where they go, we're likely to go. And Schiff's father is a very, very famous, uh, I don't know, you could almost describe it as a political prisoner. He was, he was very adamant that uh, taxing Americans was unconstitutional, the income tax, because uh, in the early days of America all their taxes were tariffs, they were literally just like import and export duties, there was no income tax and then the income tax was introduced and Schiff's father was convinced that it was unconstitutional and, and uh, the government had no right to collect it and, uh, and he got locked up and died in prison uh, for, for those beliefs. So anyway, Schiff's father said the government is like a blood transfusion from one arm to the other where they spill most of the blood. And the more you think about that, the more you think it's, it's actually probably true. So sorting out the electricity means digging out this spreadsheet from wherever I saved it from years of last year and then and then logging on and entering the, uh, sorry, junction of death. I forget, I'm not going to try. There's a massive great skip lorry coming. I'm not going to pull out in front of that. Otherwise, I might end up in the back of it. Yeah, so I've got to type all the figures in and then I've got to work out and then I've got to type all the latest plans in and, and they know all this, you know. I mean, they know all this. I mean, I save money. Well, I'll make a few hundred quid by doing this. But they know that to get on the best tariff, you have to do all this, and so that's why they don't make it any easier. You know, they don't they don't provide an online spreadsheet which has all their tariffs already plugged in and your uh, past usage already plugged in, so that all you need to do is just move a few sliders as to where you think your electricity consumption is going to go, and then it will just highlight the tariff that uh, on which you pay the least. Anyway, so I've got it. Oh, also, it's 31st, and so it's wages, isn't it? It's wages day. Um, and it's a slightly unusual wages day in that it's not just wages day, which is just normally consists of just typing in some hours and then uh, pressing a button and getting the wages out. But I've actually got two finance packages going at the moment. My accountant suggested that I get, I go online and get this QuickBooks Online package so they can sort of... I mean, basically, it gives them a window into my accounts. But whether that's going to be any help to me, I honestly don't think it will. I don't think that they're going to, you know, I mean, what you'd like was you'd like your accountant to dial in and then, you know, you log on the next day and find that actually everything has been put in the right place and properly classified and, and uh, you know, they, they've worked out for you what this is the difference between VAT exempt and and nil VAT purchases and nil VAT sales or whatever. But I don't, it's gonna do sod all. It's gonna do sod all to those accounts, other than look at them. Because they profit off, off the um, uncertainty, don't they? That's, that works to their advantage. You know, they don't, if they, if they helped you understand your accounts, you wouldn't need them so much. So what they do is, you know, and people get told off for putting all their receipts in at a shoebox and sending them to the accountant. But the accountants like that. They like, you know, helpless dentists who haven't got a clue. They like to sort it all out and then they, they send you back your accounts. And your accounts don't look anything like the figures that you've sent them. You cannot, I mean, my accounts are 21 pages long. 
and there's no way I can reconcile what they've done because they don't send you their workings. It's not like they can say, yeah, well, this figure from this box here has come from your accounts, you know, your, your accounts there. So, and then there's always this massive great paragraph at the end saying, you do accept that we prepared these figures from your figures and that if your figures are wrong, then it's your fault and you're gonna get into trouble. And you'll have to admit to the Inland Revenue that you prepared your accounts wrong, even though we prepared them. And uh, you know you hold you hold us uh, full and fully free and clear, and indemnify us against any action taken. Blah 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 blah. And <clears throat> there's no way that can be. You you can't sign that. Genuinely, you can't. Unless you're a tax accountant yourself. If you're, and we had a, we had a guy. Um, there was a dentist in Whitstable, Jane McGuckin, and I think that I don't think that was her married name anyway. But anyway, she was married to a tax inspector. Now, now, assuming he did her accounts and he took, walked her through it, I dare say she could have signed that. But I, I do sign it, but I don't. You know, it's just like if I was ever had to be held to that. The first thing I would say is. I have not got a clue what I'm submitting. And let's face it, if you did have a clue, you wouldn't need a bloody accountant. That's why I pay an accountant £3,000 a year or whatever. It is it's because the whole system is completely indecipherable to me and I've got personal uh, accounts to put in, personal tax to pay, I've got corporate accounts to put in, corporate tax to pay, um, and then uh, Got to sort out any capital gains on top of that, blah blah blah. I wouldn't, you know, if I if I could sign that statement, I wouldn't need an accountant. But that's just CYA, isn't it? What the Americans will cover your ass. So anyway, they've put me online, but online you have to pay extra for the uh, payroll module. So I'm now paying like sixty pounds a month for the desktop accounting plus the payroll module and I'm now paying another 10-15 quid a month for the online accounting plus and I need to subscribe to the online payroll module which doesn't come uh, included so I think what I'll do is I'll do the accounts using the desktop system I'll put I'll put it through there and get the uh, the figure and then um, no, I'm going to have to do it online because I'm going to have to do it online because otherwise, if I just pay the staff and then, mind you, I can enter the historical year to date figures online. So that's the only way you can do it because it doesn't carry the data forwards. So I'm going to have to, I'll just have to do it on the desktop version and then enter the, and then plus we've got another, we've got a girl who we're making redundant or the reception job, we're making the reception job redundant. So she's a girl, she's in her 50s, but... So, uh... So we've got, I'm not kidding you, in addition to her wages, and bearing in mind she hasn't worked for a month, I'm going to have to pay her up to, uh... The, the, like, the 7th of May or something, plus... Uh, another nearly eight thousand pounds on top in redundancy pay, which is is a it's a cash flow problem only because after September I've worked out based on her wages I'll be quits in every month, so in other words I'll be saving money after September. But the question is, where do you get eight thousand quid? You know, where do you find it? I've had to pay it in. To the business so that the business can pay it out to her because the business can't afford it you've got this stupid situation where the business is the business needs to make someone redundant and is, is financially not at all a good time for the business to be paying any more money and yet to save money on wages you have to pay eight thousand pounds up front at a time when when you're so desperate, you've had to make a job redundant. 
so desperate to save money. So the moral of the story is don't wait until you need to make some, make everybody redundant straight away when you can afford to. Don't wait until you need to make them redundant, which is when you can't afford to. And you can apply to get some government assistance, but it's not assistance, it's just a loan. They just loan you the money and they loan you the money and say, well, you know, we're loaning you this money on the basis that obviously you can't afford it, but you'll pay us back over, say, 10 months. And you have to send a supporting letter from your accountant uh, stating that making this payment would pretty well bankrupt you. You know? And so, so do you want, do you want, do you want a letter on file from your accountant saying that £10,000 would bankrupt you? Does that, is that a good sign? Is that a, a sign of a healthy business? The fact that you can easily get a letter from your accountant saying that 8,000 quid would tip you over the edge and, and make you bankrupt. How do you think the bank's going to feel about that if they find out? You know, the bank that's lent you hundreds of thousands of pounds and finds out that you're on the verge of bankruptcy. <laughs> oh, they'd be, they'd be, they'd have your house on the market, wouldn't they? As soon as you can say, Warden Partners. Oh, well, so that's it. So that's challenges to, for today. Not all of them, by the way, you know. There'll be others. But uh, sorting out my electric bill, calculating how, you know, the closing pay for someone, which is, you know, then you'll work out how much holiday they've had, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, up to their closing date and then working out the redundancy pay, which is reasonably simple. And then, and then something, and then you just get like a spanner in the works, don't you? You get something like your, you find that by the time you've paid the redundancy pay and the payroll, you're over the limit for how much you can make on your online bank account or something. So, and this QuickBooks Online is, uh, you know, it's supposed to read your transactions in from your bank. So it's really supposed to sort of, it stops you reconciling everything because basically it brings in the transactions from your bank and then it matches them up with the transactions in your accounts. And uh, so you're automatically, you're automatically up to speed with the bank. Uh, and basically if your accounts agree with the bank statement, then you're, you're pretty okay. You know, uh, apart from that, it's just all, it's just all shifting the uh, deck chairs around other than the payments in and out, which all go through the bank, so. But anyway, I've got a guy in this morning, he uh, wants four teeth out, and uh, he's an interesting case in himself because he's been to a couple of dentists who said they won't take his teeth out. And then I had another girl in, yeah, the day before yesterday, whose teeth were fine, and she wanted to have them taken out as well. So I might, tomorrow, I might do a, a quick video on, uh, the ethics of whether or not you should extract teeth which could probably be saved in all in all these cases these teeth could probably be saved and in one case I agreed to take them out and in the other case I didn't um, because this was this woman had a poor appearance of her upper incisors and said that a friend of hers had had a, a part upper acrylic denture to solve this problem and it, and it looked marvelous and that's what she wanted but there's nothing wrong with the teeth other than the fact they were heavily filled and she was a bit of a coffee drinker. So, but this guy, he's, um, his teeth are literally worn down to gum level. He's got that classic posture in, you know, sort of quasi class three posturing and, uh, you know, and he's not, he's not gonna stump up for four post crowns plus a chrome. So we're just, uh, we're just moving him on to full force towards them. Not not completely onto them, but you know, he's, we're gonna make him an upper denture IR. But I'm doing the extractions in the morning and not in the afternoon because he's on anticoagulants and he's stopped the anticoagulants this morning as uh, you're supposed to with certain anticoagulants. And uh, so 
we've got all day to manage him if he bleeds, which he won't. Okay, so that's my day. I got, you know, I hope you've got less on your mind than I have because there's, I just hate this, you know, it just sucks the joy out of life, doesn't it, all this crap. All right, anyway, I'll find something to laugh about. Don't worry, see you later, bye.